was biting my tongue on my political opinion because I thought it would be better for my children. And now you look up and my kids are going to a school that teaches black kids a complicated Kwanzaa. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. (laughs) You just watched a portion of Kanye West's interview with Tucker Carlson that never aired. That Fox News decided to edit out of the final product and somehow Motherboard over at Vice News was able to obtain that footage along with a lot more footage that we're about to show you. But before we get to that stuff, I'm just gonna go to you immediately, Waz. Like, what is going on? Kanye is off his meds. I like, there's no other way to put it, right? Like, so, like, do other people struggling with bipolar disorder immediately uh, say insane anti Semitic things? No, I just think Kanye, because he's able to generate money for people. People still mess with them. Like other people that might say some messed up things, they just would not be afforded the opportunity to go talk to Tucker Carlson or go to CNBC and talk about how they're gonna tank somebody's stock or whatever. It's just that this guy, one, he commands a lot of attention, and two, like I said, he's earned a lot of money for um, some prominent people. So people feel still feel a need to be close to him, or else they would have threw this guy in the trash bin with everybody else who said some like just. 10% of the craziest things this guy said, but you know, he continues to command attention. His sneakers continue to sell out. Um, and people still want to put him on TV. So we got to get up on TYT and talk about how out of his mind he is. Okay, so let's address the fact that his sneakers still continue to sell out, mm-hmm. right? Does that say anything about the country? Mm, no, I think it says something about consumer culture mm-hmm. and that it's not binded to any of the stuff that you and I care about, you know, being a good person or whatever. Like you go look up some of the stuff that like a brand like Dolce and Gabbana has done in the past uh, when it comes to racism, sexism, all kinds of messed up stuff and people still want to deal with them, right? Like I just don't think consumer culture is too concerned mm. about Who's a good person and who's not? Uh, people want to be attached to cool for whatever reason. People still associate Kanye's products with cool, and so they buy them. Mm-hmm. I, I, like I don't know what else yeah, to no, say. That's, people that's, are heartless. That's fair. Anna. That's fair because literally every brand has something shady tied yeah, to Yeah, right? and, and, and I'm not above it either, right? Like I love Nike as much as the next person. And you know, you can look at some of the practices at where they where they make their products overseas, the working conditions, mm-hmm. um, how much those people might get paid or might not get paid. Uh, like it goes across the board, Apple, you name it. Um, it's just Kanye, people, he's a lightning rod and people enjoy it and they continue to enjoy it. What I think is, Interesting about what's transpiring with Kanye. I think the statements he's making. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna be honest. I think tying his very clear anti-Semitic statements to his mental health condition is defamatory to others who also have that mental health condition and don't spout hateful anti-Semitic rhetoric. Sure. I think what well, I don't think I know that bipolar disorder. And not only do I know, Kanye knows because he himself has said this publicly. When you're not on your meds, you're not getting the treatment you need, you start having paranoid thoughts. And I just find it fascinating that his paranoid thoughts are deeply anti-Semitic, where he thinks that everything is being controlled by Jewish people. Hmm. He then goes into like this weird, I'm black and I can't be anti-Semitic because all blacks are Jews. I like I I think that's a reference to this weird fringe group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um I, I think it's a reference to uh like these Eastern African people mm-hmm. who um you know uh the uh we don't need to get into what, yeah, what he's no, talking about. I'm not about. gonna get into it, especially I don't, I don't since get I into, don't know the Yeah, I don't wanna get into that either, but I will say this, and, and I don't think I'm breaking news here on TYT. I think a lot of prominent black people have Jews on the brain. I really do think so. Really, why? Yeah, they, there's just an obsession with this idea that Jewish people are clearly people who were oppressed in this country, mm-hmm. who have made a way for themselves financially. And a lot of prominent people 
who are black when they reach certain echelons, they find that they are surrounded by a lot of Jewish people who are also mm -hmm. successful. So I find that a lot of prominent black people are just obsessed with how did Jewish people do this, right? Mm -hmm. Like how did Jewish people go from being a legitimately persecuted group of people in this country to not? anymore in America. I'm not talking about any other place, but here in America, the Jews have made a way for themselves. And I think prominent black people, just a lot of them, not all of them are obsessed with the Jewish story here in America mm -hmm. and how so many of them could be so successful financially and prominent. Well, okay, so I wanna move on to other parts of the interview that did not air. And this part actually really bothered me. Uh, because I'm so sick of people who are super wealthy and like they're good, okay? They're not wanting for anything. Turning around and looking at a group of people who are struggling and telling them to basically shut up and get over it. And that's what you get in this next clip, so let's watch. You know, I was talking to Ice Cube today and we got really beat up in 2020 for saying we need to approach things a different way and not just be trauma drunk. Right. Which is a term that I, you know, God just hit me with in the past couple of days. We are no longer trauma drunk. We are no longer trauma drunk and we're no longer trauma bonding and we're no longer woke in the sense of what woke is because woke is just complaining about racism, but not doing anything about it. So what we're gonna do about it is say, hey, you know what? Y'all not gonna send nobody at me based on my opinion. You asked the question before, it drove me crazy to not be able to say that I like Trump. Okay, so there's two parts of that that I wanna comment on. I'll start with the last part, which is a smaller part. You say it all the time and we get to say what we think. Get the F over it, I'm so tired of the constant freaking whining and crying by right wingers like we're not we can't say anything without everyone giving us a <laughs> massive hug and a kiss on the cheek yeah. what's well, so unfair we have political views too i think trump is a coward a fraud and probably wears adult diapers but presents himself as like this big masculine tough guy that's what i think about donald trump that'll probably offend a lot of trump supporters and they're allowed to be offended there's no constitutional protection against being offended I get to be offended, you get to be offended. It's called America, get the F over it. I, I like, if you don't like being criticized or countered for your political views, then don't share your political views. But then if you do, don't turn around and cry about it when others disagree with you. I disagree with him, so what? Yeah, and, and it's the richest part about Kanye's complaint over there is that literally, just seven years ago, before he got his big deal with Adidas, um, which by the way, just as a sidebar for people to understand, Kanye's deal with Adidas pays him more in royalties than Michael Jordan makes with Nike, mm -hmm. okay? And Michael Jordan's a billionaire off of that deal, okay? So this guy is rich now. Yeah, but he's, he's basically such a victim. He's he, such a victim. Exactly. Yeah. And but before he got his Adidas deal, he was crying about the high fashion world not embracing him, and he was crying about racism in that world. Exactly. That's what he did. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank what you. he was doing. Thank you. He was crying about racism the whole time. I'm so tired of people who live in their own little elite bubble who don't have to worry about paying their rent. They don't have to yeah. worry about their mortgage. They don't have to worry about their kid drowning in student loans. They don't have to worry about any of the stuff that all of us have to worry about. But more importantly, when it comes to an underserved community like black people in America, specifically pointing to them and telling them shut up and get over it. Yeah. It's like, it's so deeply disturbing how easily people become disconnected from reality, from the communities they come from, the second they're insulated by wealth. Yeah.
And and again, you, like it's 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 instructive. I would encourage people who are listening today to go. Go back and look at some of Kanye's interview. You can look at the Sway interview, that because that one went viral. The how Sway, you don't got the answers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Uh, he's literally crying about. I did an internship at Fendi. I did this. Louis Vuitton won't give me, won't let me run their company. You know, Chanel won't let me do this. Like he's literally crying about racism affecting his ability to work at a high-end fashion house. That's what he was complaining in service of. And so for him to then turn around and be like, well, you know, black people who are marginalized and who are actually marginalized and don't have an opportunity to, you know, um hang out with Elon Musk or whatever the hell it is he likes to do, uh, to tell them, oh, you guys are being dramatic. You know, you guys are being dramatic about rent, about a job that could pay you a livable wage, about, you know, child care, etc. Uh, you know, it's just rich. And that's why I'm not gonna lie, like I personally Ever since he did that TMZ stunt in 2016 or 17, whenever it was, uh, I've tuned Kanye out. Because yeah. uh, I was like, this is a spoof. Right. Like, slavery is a joke. <laughs> like, at a certain point, it's there's nothing interesting to say about Kanye. He's saying stupid, hurtful, historically inaccurate stuff, mm -hmm. and he's just not gonna stop. And again, like, there are people around him who profit off of him yes. staying this way. Yep. And so nobody's gonna step in and be like, yo, Kanye, stop. That's exactly he's right. He's a lot of people's meal ticket. That's exactly right. So it's just right. gonna continue this way. So on that point, and this is the final clip, because I think this clip is telling. It's so clear to me that he's being used by the right wing because what he's about to say is so insane. It's and and no one, I mean, there's a reason why Fox News clipped this part out. They didn't include it in the final product. So let's watch. I have visions that God gives me just over and over on community building and how to build these free energy, kinetic, fully kinetic energy communities where we impress we we put the least impression on the earth we're not building the the new new york skyline fight that we are humble in the way that we present ourselves we've got to rethink who we are as a species i'm seeing visions from god kinetic energy <laughs> no he's lost his mind and it's very easy to manipulate oh, and use a man who has lost his mind for your own political agenda, which is what the right wing is doing as we speak. And to your point about the people who enable him, all the yes men who surround him, they make money off of him. Yeah. So it's pretty gross. And look, we talked about the ramifications of all of this when it comes to the country. Because what this does is it normal, like the anti Semitic stuff, fine. You want to provide cover for him by saying he has a mental health issue. I disagree with you, but fine, that's okay. You want to do that? Cool. But think about what happens immediately after that. You got Candace Owens, you've got the Attorney General of Indiana. Mm -hmm. You have all of these people <laughs> lining up to defend his anti Semitic statements while simultaneously normalizing open, transparent anti Semitism. And what does that snowball into? We know what that snowballs into. It's incredibly dangerous and it's disgusting. But people got to make their money. So. That's what we're doing. And I with. do think it's a story as old as time. There's no more useful a tool to the right wing than a non white person who's willing to spew, you know, grand wizard of yeah. the KKK rhetoric. Like they love that more than anything else. Like, go ahead, black man, talk about how ridiculous these Negroes are and how they're over the top, too emotional, and they need to work hard. And go ahead, spew that to them, black man. We need that. Thank you. It's so gross. Um, it's, it's, it's their favorite play, play out of the playbook. I mean, it's Fox News 101. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.